Uh, if you have your Bibles, and I hope that you do, if you'd find your way over to Hebrews chapter 11, and let's look at verses 1 through 6. Now, I know when you get there, you're going to read the first part of that, and this is going to be a very familiar passage. And um, I, I just uh, to tell you a little bit about what got me here, you know, as the week, as, as, as things happen in the week, you know, when you have conversations with people and you see folks in different places and that kind of thing, you know, some words, or maybe you didn't even have a conversation, but maybe you were, you were, you were somewhere and you heard a conversation, and, um, and, and there were some words that you used in that conversation that make your ear kind of perk up a little bit, right? Well, uh, as, as, um, as I was out and about, or wherever I was, or maybe talking on the phone, um, uh, I, there was a word that came up this week uh, that really, uh, uh, again, I thought, you know, man, it's, it's kind of like love. We hear love used a lot, uh, not in the context, though, of how God intended it to be used. And the word that, that I saw, that, that I heard this week that really got my attention that I'd like to talk about for a little bit this morning is the word faith. Faith. We, we hear and have heard a lot, especially in these last weeks, uh, months even, about, about faith. You know, what, uh, you know if, if you do this, you've got faith, but if you don't do this, well, you don't have any faith and that kind of thing. So I thought, hey, maybe this will be a good opportunity for us to kind of, uh, let's, let's take a focused look and let's figure out what this word faith is, uh, especially from a biblical standpoint, because, you know, we like to take it and insert it into a a worldly view, a worldly life, and when we do that, it begins to lose what uh, it originally uh, was intended to do and, and how it's uh, to speak to us. So let's jump in. Let's read Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to start in verse 1, and we're going to go to verse 6, okay? It says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the men of old gained approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the Word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain, though, uh, though with, through which he obtained the testimony that he was righteous, God testifying about his gift. And through faith, though he is dead, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he would not see death. And he was not found because God took him up. For he obtained the witness that before he, his being taken up, he was pleasing to God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who, came, who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. All right, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I pray now that you would just open our hearts and minds this morning, and Lord, help us to see your ideas and your thoughts in these words. And Lord, I pray that, Lord God, that you would uh, uh, hide me behind the cross, Lord, and, and make me small, Lord, that only you would be seen and heard here in this sanctuary this morning. Father God, I pray that, you would give me clarity of thought and speech, Lord, that your word would go out unhindered from this place. And Father, I ask now that you would bind Satan and set him outside, that he'd have nothing to do here this morning. And Lord God, I, I ask you that you would have your way with us right here, right now, in this very time, in this very place. And Lord God, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Faith. Do you believe it's a fair statement to say that everyone has faith? I do. I believe that every human being has faith. They have some kind of faith. Another pastor put it this way. Another pastor said, faith is the heart of life. You go to a doctor whose name you can't pronounce. He gives you a prescription that you can't read. You take that prescription to a pharmacist that you've never seen. He gives you a medicine that you don't understand, and you take it. Now that is living by faith. Right? The fact is, we can't get through a single day without living by faith. Our faith is only as valuable, though, as the object of that faith. So what is it that makes our faith different? What is it that makes our faith 
What is it that makes our faith uh, 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 different than, 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 than the everyday run of the mill, flip the light switch on? You know, we flip the light switch on, we know that the light's going to come on. We have faith that that electricity is going to run through there and it's going to happen. We don't even think about it, right? But what is it? What, what our faith is only as valuable as the object of that faith. What is the object of your faith this morning? What is the object of your faith this morning? I, I know we have faith. I, I, I believe without faith, y'all would not have, y'all would, we wouldn't be gathered here this morning, right? We, we, came, we came because we have a, a common faith, a faith in Christ Jesus. What is your faith this morning? Well, you know, if you're a Buddhist, then your, your, your faith is in, in Buddha, right? If you're, if you're a Buddhist, if you're a, if you're a Muslim, a Muslim, uh, then, then you trust in Allah. And if you're a Hindu, then you have trust in what? Thousands of, of various, of various um, uh, gods with the little g. You know, most religious people put their faith in their ability to what? Keep the rules. Really? You know, that's, that's, that, that tricks us up. You know, we, 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 keeping the rules to, to be good enough to satisfy their God. Every human puts faith in something. It's, it's no question that that, that, that that happens. And it may be in some notion of human potential. It may be in science. It may be in, in reasoning. It may be in, in some political power. But everyone lives by faith. So our question this morning is, what is biblical faith? What is what is, what is the faith that, that, we, that we have here in this Bible, God's Word? What is the faith that we live out uh, because of what Christ did for us on the cross? Well, Hebrews 11, puts a, they, they, they put a big statement in just a, a few words. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Now, that's just a handful of words, but it's a powerful statement. A.W. Tozer had an interesting explanation for this verse. He said, faith is seeing the invisible, but not the non-existent. Some people think that faith is believing in something that is not actually there. Well, we know this morning, or at least I hope you know this morning, that God is actually here. He's gathered here in this place. I'm, I'm standing here and I'm looking out and I see, I, I see the Lord working in and through his people. That's, that's man, I, I have the best seat in the house every Sunday because I get to see God working in and through his people. Oh, man, you, you know, I, I get so encouraged. I get so encouraged by that. Biblical faith believes God when he tells us that there is a reality when we cannot see. He's saying, I'm there, I'm with you. You know, uh, I, I, I bet everybody in here, at some point in their life, maybe, there's been a time when you have experienced that realness of who God is in your life. If you're bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus, I know you experienced it one time because you felt him when he called you to him and he saved you through that precious blood of Calvary and you felt that and I know there's been other times in your life maybe when things were going along and you you felt you felt that you you saw that you you know that it's real it's more than just uh, just some some thing but it's real and it's alive and it's in your lives first Corinthians or second Corinthians puts it this way it says that we live by faith not by sight that sounds simple enough doesn't it but for some reason, people get all kind of misconceptions about what faith is. Okay? So before we talk about what faith is, let's talk about what faith is not. Well, one thing, faith is not a, a blind leap into the dark. Y'all heard that term, blind faith? Faith is a blind Faith has its eyes wide open. Faith is not jumping off the edge of something into some darkness. Faith is, is knowing that when you step off in faith towards Christ, that he is going to hold you up. He will hold on to you. You know, uh, some, some people think 
that you must, uh, you must ignore logic and reason in order to believe in God. But look, science itself, you know, it, it always amazes me when, these, when all these, these, uh, these people of, uh, of academia, they, they, they set off in some, in some effort to disprove uh, God. And, and somewhere along the way, if they work hard enough at it, God gets a hold of them. And then they find out that, hey, there is a God, and he's an almighty God, and, and he has a son named Jesus, and it, it didn't just happen. You know, some people think that we have to ignore that. Look, science constantly shows that order does not grow from chaos and that design points to a design. It didn't just happen. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed as God, at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was in or what was visible, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Uh, Dwight L. Moody said this about faith. He said, he said, I prayed, I prayed for faith, and uh, thought that someday it would come down and strike me like lightning. But faith didn't seem to come. One day I read in Romans that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I had up to this time closed my Bible and prayed for faith, he said. He said, now, now I opened my Bible and began to study. And faith has been growing ever since. You know, another misconception is by faith we can make God do anything that we want Him to do, right? Yeah, we believe that faith is, 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 is telling God to do what, hey, God, this is what I need. This is what I need in my life. Now, I know you're going to take care of it, and I'm just, I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to just leave it there, and I know you're just going to take care of it. Some Christians think faith is, is kind of a, 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 a magic medicine almost. But biblical faith is not the ability to manipulate God. You can name it and claim it. You can blab it and grab it and all that kind of good stuff. And I tell you what, if that's your religion, if that's your faith, then I'm going to tell you what, that kind of faith is not going to last any longer than the first disappointment that you have in your life. Unforeseen tragedy strikes. False, uh, uh, false faith will just crumble. It'll go to pieces. Biblical faith does not believe that God will do what we say, but biblical faith knows that God is going to do what He says He will do for you and for me. That is real faith. By faith, we rest on the promises of God. No matter what the circumstances, no matter what happens. Another common misconception is that faith means knowing that all the right facts, that we know all the right facts and, and, and learning all the right rules, right? So it's kind of it's like this, you know, okay, so we got our list. We got our list and we got the little check boxes over here. All right, so I know if I start at the top, and I just go down my list, and I get all of this done. I'm going to check it off as I go. I, you know, I, 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 I turned to some direction, and, and I, 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 I stood that way for three minutes, three times a day. I'm going to check that off. And, um, you know that uh, I had prayer time uh, four times a day. Okay, I got that checked off. I had quiet time. I read my Bible. I read my Bible four times. Uh, you know, I, checked, I got that checked off. You know, I got my checklist. I'm doing my checklist. Surely if I do this checklist, God's going to listen. God's going to hear me when I, when, I, when I talk to him. Biblical faith is a relationship with a personal God. Biblical, uh, uh, biblical faith is not a checklist that we just go down and check off that things. And then, okay, as soon as I get that last thing checked off, God sees it. And now he's got a check by my name. No, that's not how that works. It's about having a relationship with a with a God. Look, look, when I was lost and undone in my sin, 
Look, I didn't have to get a check by my name for God to reach down and save me. He knew I was lost and undone in my sin, and he saw me how I was, and he saved me just like that. It was personal. It was real. And it hasn't changed one single bit. So, what does real faith do? That's what real faith doesn't do, but what does real faith do? Well, real faith will always result in real worship, in real worship. Real faith will always result in real worship. In our text this morning that we read in verse 4, we, we, uh, we read about Abel. The first biblical example of a worshiper is Abel, the younger brother of Cain. We know, the, we know that story. We know uh, Cain was the first man born to the first parents. And uh, the text reminds us that by faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he, uh, commended, he, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offering. Abel worshipped in obedience. Obedience, that's a word we just don't even like to hear anymore today, is it? That we have to be obedient to think that there's, there's something that we, we have to do, something uh, uh, that we have something that we have to do that that we don't want to do, but it's what we're supposed to do. Obedient, we we uh, obedient. Uh, Cain realized. Cain realized uh, what that was. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, Cain. Unfortunately, Cain was offering was not able to realize what that was. Unfortunately, Cain's offering was not so pleasing to God. And uh, out of envy, we know that Cain, his brother, killed uh, Abel. But Abel's honest worship stands as a testimony. It stands as a testimony to this, it, that, that his offering, faith that pleases God, will always lead to worship. You know, I want to talk for just a few minutes about this, uh, this worship here. Uh, it was his worship of, of giving. It was an offering that he made. You know, that's, a, that's something that's changed in our, in our service, right? So, you know, that was always before, before COVID, before the virus, before restrictions and things had to be different. You know, part of what was part of all, always part of our, our service was offering, right? There'd be a time when, when, when the men of the church would come down and, and, and they would, they, we'd, have a, we'd, have a, we'd sing a song of giving and, and we'd have a time of offering and, 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 the, and the plates uh, the, would be, passed around and, and, and then it would be brought back up and left here on the table and that's something we're, we're not doing now but look that doesn't mean that we're off the hook for offering or tithing or uh, that sacrificial giving are you drawn to worship God with all of your heart and your mind and your soul because see Abel was he was drawn to God to worship him with everything that he was, everything that he had. When we come together, we worship in song and scripture and reading and sermons, but, but the part of our worship that follows the example of Abel is our time of offering. I want to ask you this morning, do you give your tithes and your offerings as an act of worship? You know, just because we're not doing it how we used to do it doesn't mean that God still doesn't expect that to happen he still expects that do you give with a sincere heart a heart that's full of gratitude you know for, to return How, how's it? i always love that that part in the prayer I, I got, the guys always say it when they pray you know thank you lord for have given us the opportunity to, re, to return a small portion of what we've been so richly blessed with do you believe that this morning I do. I believe that, I believe that, that um, we are so richly blessed and God only asks for a small portion to be, to be given. Uh, <clears throat> is your offering a sacrifice of praise and obedience? If, if so, your faith pleases God. Genesis chapter 5 and verse 24 tells us Enoch walked with God. Then he was no more because God took him away. You know, here we see real faith was will always result in a real walk. The world's watching. They want to see how we're, how we're walking. They want to see what we're doing. Verse 5 elaborates. It says, By faith Enoch was taken 
from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. Well, evidently, Enoch walked, Enoch walked so closely with God that God took him without allowing him to have to experience physical death. For Enoch, we learn that to walk with God is to please God. He loves for us to walk with Him. What does that mean to walk with God? It means, to, it means that we have to know God. It means that we have, to, we have to spend time in His Word. It means that we have to spend time talking with Him. And it means that we, we spend time learning about who He is. I want to ask you a question this morning. Do you you walk with God each day? Do you make that a priority in your life to walk with God each day? Do you communicate with Him while you're doing your chores? While you're mowing the yard? While you're brushing your teeth? Whatever it is, whatever it is, you you fill in that blank. While while you're driving your car, you know, I always talk about, you know, I I pray a lot. I tell you, you know what, I, I don't understand this, but when I'm in my car all by myself, I preach my best sermons. What's, what's the deal with that, right? I always joke about praying, you know, pray wherever you are, praying in your car. Don't close your eyes, though, when you're praying in your car driving, right? Right? But do we spend time, the, the captain of a, of a sea ship uh, that had a passenger on it, and his, the passenger was George Mueller. Do y'all know who George Mueller is, that's a, I, I believe most of us have heard that name. George Mueller, he was a passenger aboard a ship, uh, 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 and he was, uh, he, was on, he was from Bristol, England. He was traveling across the ocean, and he tells this story. The captain tells this story. He said that George Mueller of Bristol was on board, and he had been on, a, 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 on the bridge. The captain had been on the bridge for 24 hours, and he never left the bridge of the ship. George Mueller came up to the captain. He came up to the bridge and he said to the captain, he said, I have come to tell you that I must be in Quebec on Saturday afternoon. That he had an engagement there and he had to be there. And the captain looked at George and he said, it's impossible. And George said, very well, if your ship cannot take me, God will find some other way. He said, I've never broken an engagement in 67 years. So let's go down to the chart room and begin to pray. It says that the captain looked at, looked at uh, this man of God. And he thought to himself, what lunatic asylum did this man come from? Well, I've never heard of such a thing in all my life, he said. Mr. Mueller, I said, do you have any idea how dense this fog is that we're right in the midst of? He said that Mr. Mueller did not reply. And then he said, my eye is not on the density of the fog, but on the living God who controls every circumstance of my life. He said that George Mueller knelt down and prayed a simple prayer. And when he had finished his prayer, I was going to pray. But Mr. Mueller put his hand on my shoulder and told me not to pray. As you do not believe, God will answer. And I do believe God has answered. So there is no need whatsoever for you to pray about it. I looked at him and George Mueller said, get up, Captain, and open the door and you'll find that the fog is gone. I got up and the fog was indeed gone. And on that afternoon, George Mueller kept his promised engagement. George Mueller, he was was one of God's great men of faith. There's so many stories that we could could tell of, of, of of George's prayer life. 
Uh, this is the kind of faith, though. This is the kind of faith that pleases God. I want to talk to you about one more, Noah. That was a, you, we all know who Noah is. Noah, Noah is, is much better known than Enoch. Noah is a man whose, whose faith led to some, some long, hard work. Led to some long, hard work. It, it's, uh, maybe, maybe you never thought about it, but building an ark is no small task, right? It's no small task. I want you to think about this for a minute. So, can you imagine Noah and God having a conversation? Well, Noah, it's going to rain. It's going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights. Can you imagine the look that must have been on Noah's face because, well, God, what's rain? Because up until that time, it had never rained on the face of the earth. So just to get past that to the part of, I'm going to need a a boat big enough to put some of every kind of animal in because the the earth is going to be covered with water. Well, look, he had to get past just the thing of, what is rain? Because up until that time, all the moisture from the earth had come from the ground. It, 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 hadn't, it hadn't fallen from the, the sky. You know, maybe, maybe again, you never thought about that task. You know, it took Noah and his three sons over 100 years to complete that project. What do you think about that? Man, you know, we start squirming around after an hour in church on Sunday. It took him it took him a, a hundred years to, to build a, a ship to, 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 to get rained on that he didn't even know what rain was. Verse seven says, By faith Noah. By faith Noah. When warned about these things not yet seen, in holy fear he built an ark to save his family. By his faith he com- he he, by his faith, he commended, uh, condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. I heard a story the other day about a, a grandmother telling, uh, <clears throat> telling what her little grandson prayed at the, at the dinner table. said eventually he had recently learned the story of Noah at church. Uh, evidently, he had, he, had learned, he, had, he had learned about the story of Noah at church. And after thanking God for the food, he said, And hey Lord, if you need somebody to build an ark, I'll do it. You know, most of us, most of us won't be asked to take on a project like an ark. But God has given each and every single one of us a task to do. A job, a project, work. He's asked each and every one of us to, 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 to stand up to that assignment. Do you have the kind of faith that leads you to work hard for the kingdom of God? Do you have that kind of faith? That is the faith that pleases God. I, I, I like what Warren Wiersbe said in one of his commentaries. He said, faith enables us to understand what God does. Faith enables us to see What cannot be seen as a result, faith enables us to do what others cannot do. Are you willing to do what God's asked you to do? Abraham. Abraham is called the father of our faith. Perhaps the biggest challenge Abraham faced was that his faith required him to wait. Waiting is a hard thing, isn't it? Wait. That's what Abraham was at. I, knew you, I bet y'all thought I was going to say something else about Abraham, didn't you? God asked Abraham to do a lot of things. God also asked Abraham to wait. Abraham waited for home in the promised land. In fact, he spent his entire life living in tents. He waited until he was 100 years old for the son that God promised him. And all along he waited and he waited and he waited for the promised Messiah and the eternal city of God. By faith, 
He made his home in the promised land. Like a stranger in a foreign country, he lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him to the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. You know, when you've prayed, when you've prayed and you've prayed and you've prayed all that you could pray, and you've done and you've done and you've done and you've done all that you can do, sometimes the greatest proof of your faith is that you just simply wait. You know, we wait. We wait with a confidence, though. We wait with a confidence that the world cannot begin to understand. We wait because we know. We know we have a confidence because we know that there's a day coming. There's a day coming when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes, I I, I want to be patient. I want to be patient. And, and And I want to be at work. We wait with confidence because we know. And while we wait... While we wait, while we wait, in faith, we continue to worship and to walk with God and to work for His kingdom. You see, this is the faith that pleases God. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your word this morning and Lord I'm so thankful for all the ways you show us in your word of how you would have us to live Lord you tell us what true faith is about it's, it's, it's about who you are it's about the Father and the Son the Holy Spirit it's about all of what you are Father you tell us that our faith is not found in the circumstances of this life even though Circumstances, man, they they turn us upside down. They twist us all around. But, Lord God, you tell us that our faith is not in circumstances, but it is in you, Lord. You and you alone. It's a faith that this world cannot understand. It's a faith that we have to we have to wave it like a banner, Lord. We need to, to show it to this lost and dying world that we don't live in the things of this world, but we live in the truth and the promise of a loving Savior. Father, I pray that you would help us to live out a faith that speaks to those that are lost and undone. And they're seeing those that are separated from the love and grace of Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to live a life that gives us the privilege and the opportunity to be a witness to a lost and dying world. And Lord God, when you give us that opportunity to be that witness, Lord, also give us the courage and the boldness and the strength to be that witness that you would have us to be. Lord, help me to, Lord, live my life every day in faith. And Lord, I know there's a day coming when in all of that faith, Lord, we'll have the privilege to stand before you and, 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 and there won't be a need for faith anymore. It'll just, be, it'll just be the truth. And it'll be you. And Lord, there won't be any circumstances anymore. It'll just be heaven. So Lord God, help us to Help us to move towards that today. Lord, help me to move towards that today. Lord God, I know there are times when my faith gets to me. So Lord, I pray that you would just help me in those times. Help us in those times. Help the church right now, Lord. uh, As we hear this word faith thrown around in so many different kind of ways. But But Lord, we have a faith that's valuable because we have an almighty God. We have a Redeemer named Jesus 
And we have the power of the Holy Spirit working in and amongst the people of God. Lord, help us to stand on that today. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.